I'm Cap Bentley, market news editor of WI Radio and WI TV at Iowa State College. It's my privilege each day, as well as my responsibility, to visit with thousands of farmers throughout the state of Iowa and with uh, an equal number of tradespeople who assemble, market, and distribute the farm products of agriculture. These farmers who have livestock, grain, dairy products, poultry products for sale in our highly competitive marketing system want to know each day what the volume is coming to market of each uh, product and what prices are being paid for the various grades and classes of farm commodities. Thousands of people throughout the state of Iowa are listening each day by means of radio and television as indicated by the uh, pins on this Iowa map. Not only do the farmers and tradespeople in Iowa, but also in the neighboring states, as indicated by this chart and the pins on the farming area in the western Corn Belt, want to know what the supply and price pattern is so they can do a better job of marketing and distributing their farm products. The main reason Iowa State College provides 107 minutes of market news and outlook information daily is that Iowa possesses 25% of the grade A farm land in the United States. And that area surrounding Iowa and the neighboring states where listening is equal to that of Iowa possesses another 25% of the grade A land of the country. Iowa leads all states in the United States in hog production. She leads all states in beef cattle production for market. Iowa is the third state in the production of sheep and lamb for market. She leads all states in the number of chickens on farms and the number of eggs produced. Iowa is the sixth in milk production with average production per cow in 1957 at 6,480 pounds. And the average production has been increasing annually for a number of years. Iowa leads all states in corn and oat production. And she is the second uh, largest producer of soybeans from which a large quantity of our protein supplement for animal feed originates. The farmers and tradespeople who market and assemble farm products in Iowa, who are on this Goodwill Farm tour from America to your country, represent all classes of and kinds of farming in the state of Iowa. They come from all sections of the state of Iowa as represented by this map. You see they are distributed throughout the entire state. We are here in your country to visit with you to get acquainted with you and to learn how you farm. And we would like to take you by means of camera back to Iowa and out onto the farms of several of the men that are here on this tour so you may get acquainted with how they farm and how they live. We hope that one day you will come to America and that you will have an opportunity to visit some of these farms or other farms in our country and that these exchange visits will help us better become acquainted with each other and better understand our farm problems. We have selected four farms at random. Each farm shows a little different combination of enterprises. The first farm we visit is that of Jim Brooks, just 11 miles southwest of Ames, Iowa. Jim farms 1,700 acres, which seems like a rather sizable unit for three men to operate but it takes considerable pasture acreage to maintain a herd of 180 cows and their calves. We better check at the house to see where Jim may be found on this widespread acreage. We have a rather jumpy little terrier to announce her arrival. Mrs. Brooks tells us Jim is over with the cattle along the Des Moines River, which is about 12 miles west of the cropland area. The Brooks daughters are on hand to greet us, Carolyn 16, and Anita, 13. Both girls are handy with livestock, and they also help with the haying and other farm activities in season. We find Jim in one of the upland meadows, where there are about 65 head of the Angus cows and their calves. Jim is busy spreading a salt mixture for the herd 
because they require a considerable amount of salt during these hot summer days. These calves could all be registered, but since he is not selling them as breeding stock, he has not gone to the expense of uh, registration. Purebred deep-bodied sires are used with the herd. The calves show this beef-type breeding, which registers when these steers and heifers go to market. From 20 to 25 of the best heifer calves are kept for replacement purposes each year, and that many cows are retired from the herd and finished for market. The cows never receive grain, but they get some sugar, sorghum, silage during the winter months. Most of their winter feed is in baled hay. This is put up from 150 acres of legume grass and another 150 acres of oat hay. At the home feedlot, the yearlings are put on full feed after cleaning up the corn fields last fall. They are sorted off as they get up to choice grade and moved to market. This load will be headed for the terminal market in Chicago. The cattle will be loaded in the middle of the afternoon, head for the market some 350 miles away. They arrive in the middle of the night, they're bedded down for a few hours, then are given an early feeding of hay and are ready for the morning market. Jim's last shipment of steers averaged 950 pounds. They brought $28 per hundredweight in Chicago. During the year, he will feed from 350 to 400 head of cattle. Takes lots of corn to finish that many cattle. So Jim has a good many of these mile-long rows of corn. His corn acreage is a total of 300 acres per year. So his cropping system is a rotation of corn, corn, oats, and hay. Approximately 600 acres of crops, leaving 1,100 acres in permanent pasture. A visit to the Jim Brooks farm would not be complete without some of Mrs. Brooks' fresh cookies and a refreshing glass of lemonade. Our next visit is to the farm of Irving Anton, who lives some 90 miles northeast of Ames. Irving, in contrast to the Brooks farm, buys all of his feeder cattle and all of his feeder pigs from outside the state. The feeder cattle are raised some 700 to 1,000 miles to the west and northwest in the states of Wyoming or Montana. The feeder pigs are raised over in the dairy section of Wisconsin, some two to 300 miles east of Iowa. The Anton farm produces large quantities of hay and corn for silage, as well as ground corn to feed out the 800 to 1,000 beef cattle and the 900 to 1,000 head of hogs each year. The first person we meet is David Anton, bringing in a load of chopped hay to put into the silo. This is haymaking time, and everyone is busy getting the silos filled while the weather is favorable. 100 of the 500-acre Anton farm is planted to hay. While David takes his load to the silo and brings back another empty wagon, Irving Anton continues to fill another wagon of the mixture of legumes and grasses. Irving has two men working for him the year round, and with the two boys, Larry and David, to help during the summer, there are about 800 tons of hay and corn silage put up each year. There are 225 acres of corn land. All but about 50 of this goes into silage. There are 85 acres in oats, and the remaining 90 acres in pasture and dry lots. It seems there are silos and corn cribs sticking up everywhere as we drive into the farmstead. At one of the silos, we find Larry Anton, he's on the left, feeding the chopped hay into the elevator. Larry has been home only a few days as he just finished his freshman year at Iowa State College. The feeders may come to the farm either as calves, averaging from 350 to 450 pound, or as yearlings, 650 to 750 pound. They go out as choice fat cattle averaging somewhere between 1,000 and 1,200 pound, depending on what the market looks like as to prices for the heavy or the lighter cattle. Irving produces from 250 to 300 tons of dressed beef each year and approximately 75 tons of dressed pork. Last fall, the corn crop was very wet. Irving chopped some 26% moisture ear corn and filled this one silo. 
It is just now being fed out and it is just as sweet and fresh as when it went in last fall. With feeding operations of this size, there is very little handwork on the Anton farm. Most operations are power operated, either by electricity or gas tractor units. There are from 350 to 400 head of cattle and from 300 to 400 head of hogs on feed at the farm at the present time. The heifers are in a separate feedlot and are not as far along as are the steers. They are still getting considerable silage and not much supplemental protein. These feeder pigs come from south central Wisconsin, some 300 miles from the Anton farm. They arrived by truck some two weeks ago, weighing in the neighborhood of 35 to 40 pounds. Self-feeders containing ground corn, protein supplement and minerals, as well as running water are available for them throughout the day. In from four to five months, depending on the market outlook, these hogs will be marketed. The Elmer Denherder farm is 200 miles northwest of Ames. His farm lies in a dairy producing area and in a cattle feeding area. We arrived on his farm at just a little before five in the afternoon. Cars were going and coming as we approached the milk house. People from the nearby town of Sioux Center are already taking away the chilled whole milk that is being produced. This gives you a glimpse of Saturday evening milking. The cows are let into the milk parlor one at a time. Are washed and prepared for the milking machine. Each cow is given a feeding of protein, mineral mixture, and ground ear corn during the milking period. The milk is strained into a 500 gallon refrigerated tank from which it is dispensed to the town folks as they come for the evening supply. The milking got underway at a quarter of five and by 6.15 the 34 cows had been milked and the milking powder cleaned with the running water. Mary had served 45 to 50 customers selling from 80 to 90 gallons of milk at a price of 50 cents per gallon. This is considerably cheaper than the customer could have gotten it from the other commercial sources in the community, and it pays Elmer better than hauling it to the creamery. The surplus milk is collected in bulk tanks twice weekly at the farm by the Sioux Brand Dairy Products Cooperative Creamery, one of the largest in the state. After the milking, the cows get all the alfalfa hay they can eat. It takes lots of silage for a dairy herd like this, and on Elmer's, 360 acre farm, there's 120 acres of alfalfa, 200 acres of corn, 20 acres of oats, and the balance in pasture and feedlots. Carol, the youngest daughter, 13 years of age, is the tractor operator while baling hay. Elmer does the lifting and stacking of the bales. These bales will weigh from 60 to 65 pounds depending on the time of day and the moisture in the air. Roger, the eldest Denherder boy, is loading the baled hay into the elevator, while Phil, the youngest boy, is up in the barn stacking the bales away for winter feeding. Not all of the hay can be inside the barn, so it is piled pyramid style outside. It was late in the evening when Mrs. Denherder got most of the family around the dinner table. It was shared with Morris and Mrs. Topaski, mayor and attorney of Sioux Center. Roger's wife assisted with the dinner, but Roger and Carol were finishing up the last few rounds of bailing. It rained the next morning, but Elmer still prepared a load of fresh chopped alfalfa silage, which he mixed with the corn silage for the dairy herd. The dairy herd is kept in dry lot throughout the entire year. The feeder cattle receive silage and ground ear corn. Elmer now has 185 head of western feeders in dry lot. He feeds between 400 and 500 head of these western cattle each year. 
these cares were purchased last october averaging from three hundred eighty to four hundred pounds they were rough through the winter on silage hay and some ground ear corn they are still getting some silage but was soon beyond full feed elmer also has a nice bunch of spring pigs ready for weaning and some twenty eight head of gilts ready for fall farrowing before leaving the den herder farm we saw Phil with the 4-H calves that Carol, Mary, and he are fattening for the county fair, which is in August. This is one of the big rural young people's summer projects, which takes most of the year in preparation. Our fourth visit is to the farm of Floyd Thomas, who lives 85 miles straight north of Ames. We learned that Floyd was on his way to town with a load of corn, so we hurried into Rockwell to meet him at the elevator. The Farmers Cooperative Society at Rockwell, Iowa, which is our oldest cooperative elevator, was organized in 1889. Floyd, unlike the other three farms which we have visited, sells cash, corn, and oats, which he produces in excess of his feed requirements. Floyd pulls onto the scales, then into the elevator to dump his corn. Despite the very wet fall and winter last year, the corn dried out wonderfully very little of it was damaged. It is farms like Floyd's that furnish the corn for feeders like Irving and Elmer. Floyd sells from three to four thousand bushels of his corn each year and around a thousand bushels of the oats. But Floyd must have some protein supplement for his hogs, so he backs in for a supply of protein which has been prepared by his own cooperative. The Rockwell Cooperative last year handled over 400,000 bushels of grain, 1,200 tons of mixed feed, with a total sales of $900,000. The Rockwell Cooperative is a member of the Iowa Farmers Grain Dealers Association, along with some 333 other members. The state association handled better than 12.5 million bushels of members' grain last year. Floyd picks up his check for the corn from Stan after the cost of the feed had been deducted. Each year, Floyd receives a dividend check for the savings of his business, which he did with the cooperative elevator during the year. Floyd and his son Richard, together with Wendell, who lives nearby, farm 520 acres. 240 acres are in corn, 130 acres in small grain, 95 acres in hay and pasture, and the balance in feedlots. Floyd took us out to see the spring pig crop. He keeps about 40 brood sows for the spring litters and 20 brood sows for the fall pig crop. He has about 300 spring pigs in these three lots. He has available running water piped to the open pasture lots as well as sun shelter for the pigs during the hot weather. While we were in northern Iowa, we dropped in to see Leo Benson, general manager of State Band Creameries. Leo is in the eastern part of the country on business, but Mac McQueen, operations manager, showed us through the plant. State Brand Creameries is a merchandising cooperative that assembles butter from some 135 local cooperative creameries across the northern half of Iowa. Here in the Mason City plant, approximately 125,000 pounds per day butter is printed, packaged, and shipped to consuming areas. The butter comes in in refrigerated trucks and is placed in coolers. Samples are taken, many tests are made, such as the pH acidity control test, to maintain uniform quality of product. The butter comes from the local creameries and bulk cartons weighing 64 pounds per carton. These cartons are broken open and started through the printing and packaging process. They are first cut into four sections. Then each section goes through the printer. This machine is packaging butter in quarter pound squares. These packages happen to be carrying the state brand label. 
but they print butter for a number of outlets. Approximately 70% of the butter is sweet cream butter, with about three-fourths of this butter going to markets east of Chicago. This particular shipment is going to a chain store outlet in Minneapolis, Minnesota. State brand creameries also receive skim milk in bulk tanks from some 27 creameries within a radius of 70 miles of Mason City. About a million pounds of skim milk is processed into 90,000 pounds of powdered milk annually. We were fortunate in catching two of the children of members of the farm tour on campus during the month of June, just before the school year closed. The two students who had examinations to complete were Larry Anton, freshman in farm operations, and Beth Roby, sophomore in home economics. They are taking a moment to check the summer plans before hurrying on to final examinations. Beth was off to the home economics building for her last exam of the year. Following her examination, we again see the two students starting across central campus to Beardshire Hall. Here, Larry will take his final examination of the year. Beth was back on campus just a week later, acting as leader for her County 4-H girls who were attending the annual conference at Iowa State College. This conference is a part of the College Extension Educational Program, which is carried on in each of the 99 counties for the Iowa rural youth. The theme of the 4-H Girls Conference this year was learning to live in a changing world. There were 1,700 4-H girls and their leaders representing each county in the state attending this annual conference representing nearly 26,000 total enrollment for 1958. One of the curricula in the Agricultural Division at Iowa State College is that of farm operations. In the senior year, these students become the operating managers of a 187-acre farm. They plan and execute the cropping and livestock program for the farm. These students represent only a small proportion of our agricultural student body. The Agricultural Division has 2,000 students of the nearly 10,000 student enrollment at Iowa State College. The present cropping program is 126 acres of corn, 30 acres of oats, and 20 acres of hay. They raise about 700 hogs each year with four farrowings per year. We find two of the students checking the small grain prospects. They are also trying to determine how well the clover seeding is progressing. These students have learned how to use their book and their classroom knowledge. We hope that many of you will find it possible to come to America and visit us on these and other farms. We feel that these goodwill exchange visits will bring about better world relationships.